Welcome to my channel. If you can't draw, no problem. You can still create beautiful art journal pages with this workaround. So this fairy came from supercoloring.com and I printed it out on tissue paper. I have videos that show how to print on tissue paper, including one that's just coming out where I kind of solve some of the problems that I've had with printing on tissue paper. So this is printed out and I've sized it accordingly. Now, supercoloring.com, this is Creative Commons Attribute Commercial 4 license, which allows us to use it, alter it. So you can check those that site out as well. I'll put a link in the description box below. So once it's printed out in, on the printer, on the tissue paper, I'm just cutting it out and I like cutting right next to it. I've left the copy paper underneath to support it while I cut it. That makes it a whole lot easier to cut than if you were just holding the tissue paper. If you prefer, you can water cut it with a liner brush, but I prefer going right next to it and cutting it this way. So this is my focal image and for whatever reason I wanted to do fairies today and so I went and searched. I just did a search on supercoloring.com for fairies or fairy and this is one that I found. You have to check the copyright to see how you can use it. Now I want to get a background so I grabbed some gel prints and I picked these two. They both have lots of colors in them and some detailing and interest in them. I'm going to jumpstart my art journal process here by using a background that's halfway there at least. So I'm just kind of auditioning my fairy on each of the pages and thinking, okay, what if uh, this is my background, what colors will I use on the fairy? And while I think both of these would work really well, I've decided to use this ombre where it's yellow, pink, and orange. So what I need to have here is a straight edge across the top of the page. The rest, once I glue down, I can cut off with scissors. And I'm using, to get that straight edge, I'm using this, um, the words escape me roller to cut one of my my newest favorite tool because it cuts paper so easy now my tabletop is glass otherwise you would want to grab a cutting mat to do it so there's the straight edge across the top and I'm not worried if there's a little color missing on the sides because I can always come in and add it. I've decided that I want the yellow at the top. Thinking about how I want to put the fairy and I didn't want to get rid of the yellow. I'm going to glue this down onto my 7 by 10 Canson Mixed Media art journal page with gel medium. I'm using a brayer and then a bone folder to press and make sure that I have good adhesion. And then you should let it dry before you try to cut. It doesn't cut very well when the gel medium is wet. So I want to add some interest. Now I know I'm going to put a fairy on this and I want this to look magical. I want to add some movement to the page. So I grab this left or right swirl that I got from Ninny's napkins and swirl stamps are great all-purpose stamps and I'm putting black acrylic paint on it 
and then stamping. And I'm not worried if I don't get a perfect stamp. This isn't the focal image. This is background interest. I'm just going to tape off the coil and the white so I keep that straight edge and that precise so I can stamp off the page. So I'm just putting on black acrylic paint with a makeup sponge and stamping parts of it on here to create movement on the page. Now, I tried, I thought maybe I should put white and I tried it with white and it wasn't giving me anything of interest. The black is giving a lot of energy to the page because of the contrast. And when you use your stamps, you use acrylic paint on your stamps, you need to take time to spray them with your Murphy's Oil Soap mixture and clean them or throw them in the tub of water so that the, the acrylic paint doesn't dry on them because that will wreck your stamps. Then I grab this ethereal stencil from the Crafters Workshop and I am going to use that motif in there again with black. That's going to show up all over the place. And this is giving that magical feeling. Right now, I was thinking I was going to put the saying, you know, leave a sparkle wherever you go. So I wanted to have a sparkle. I also had pulled out a, a star stencil, thought of doing that. I like using gel prints that have that ombre kind of three color look because really it's you I don't did not have to bring out any of those colors. Everything was ready to go. then I'm just going to see where the how that looks with the fairy. Now I know I'm going to overpaint on top of the tissue paper so I'm not worried if the things are showing through. But before I glue my fairy down I want to select the sentiment and I printed out several. I did a search on Pinterest and found magical quotes or fairy quotes and I picked the one that said those who don't believe in magic will never find it. And I have a fairly bold font in the middle and I made those part, those bigger. So it says believe in magic if you read it very quickly or you have the whole saying. I felt that there was too much white so I'm bubble cutting the believe in magic part. I don't want as much white. So there I've done all the cutting and I'm ready to glue my fairy and my sentiment down. And I'm putting a some fluid matte medium underneath the fairy and then on top. Now the tissue paper is quite strong, but if you rub on it, you will rip it, which isn't the end of the world if we're going to overpaint. So I'm giving this a coat of the gel medium which turns it into a non-porous surface and prepares it a little bit for the painting overpainting that I'm going to do. I am going to add some more stenciling actually modeling paste through a stencil but I did not want that texture underneath my fairy or my sentiment. So that's why I'm gluing those down right now. And of course I dry in between and right there I ripped the tissue paper. 
Once everything is completely dry, I'm ready to start painting my fairy. Now, I'm undecided what color I want for her dress or her hair, so I'm starting with what I know. I thought, okay, I'm going to put a coat of white gesso on the wings. I wasn't sure if I was going to paint the wings gold at this time, but as I put the white, I really like the white against the background. So I'm putting a coat of gesso. Now, you can still see the lines coming through, and I'm leaving that to guide me. Now, you could have painted this very opaque white if you, would, if you wanted to. So depend on your comfort level. But you can see that I still see the webbing on the wings, which I'm going to use later, but you could use easily have freehanded that. I do use an angle brush of different sizes to paint. I find I just have a lot of control with those brushes and I switch sizes of brushes depending on um, what I'm painting. So this is the workaround. We're using free printables, we're using clip art or things from coloring books, apps as the base. And with the tissue paper, it disappears and you're just overpainting. Kind of paint by number. Now I'm using all acrylic paint to colorize my fairy, but you can use your brush markers, you could use ink to ink tense blocks, you could use whatever you choose. I prefer using things that are permanent. And when I use acrylic paint, typically I thin it down somewhat. I find it goes on better, and if I want it more opaque, I dry in between and add layers instead of trying to put it on really thickly then it tends to get globby. So now I'm still not sure what color I want to do the dress, so I'm just painting out all her skin. And I'm not worried at all that there's bits of whatever's in the background showing through, because I know I'm going to do some shading and you know it just adds interest to the overall look. So here I've switched to a very small angle brush because I'm working in a very tiny space. And now I'm going to colorize her face, but I'm gonna leave her eyes down and I, I'm leaving where the mouth is. I'm, I'm not going completely opaque. I don't wanna block that off and I have it printed out so I can look back and recreate that. I have a guide, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. If you want it more color, dry it at this stage and then come back and add a second layer. I really liking the movement of that spiral stamp in the background. It just adds to the ethereal, magical feel that I'm trying to create on this page. So you can still see the lines or the webbing on this, and I am, I've decided I'm going to leave the wings white, but I'm going to add some gold, and I'm going to use my fine line applicator bottle. I used to use these bottles all the time for all my line work. And about eight months, 12 months ago, I started using my Posca pens. So these have sat. So full disclosure, uh, 
it is a little bit globby inside, which is causing me a bit of problems. I got to continue to shake it up and get rid of the glob. So I will probably empty this out and mix some new gold paint. So I'm just going on the lines that I can see that were there, but you could easily put the webbing in, just freehand that. Because if nobody knows what it was, it can't be wrong. So however you do it. Now using the fine line applicator here, not only do you get the lines, but it's a bit dimensional. And I love that. It really adds to the fairy wings. So in this video and then on this page, we've done kind of two cheats. One, we're using a coloring page, an online coloring page to paint over instead of drawing. And we used a gel print that was existing to jumpstart our page and almost be an instant background. I knew I was going to paint, over paint this fairy and that that was going to take a little bit of time. So I didn't want to spend much time on the background. So I used an existing gel print. Now I decided that I'm going to paint the dress and I'm going to paint it yellow. And I'm mixing the yellow paint, the yellow oxide paint with the white gesso as I put it on. And while I'm really liking, it looks kind of gold, goes well with the gold embellishments on the wings, it's a little too dull. And I want it to correspond a little more to the yellow, the brighter yellow that's the top band on my page. So once this is dry, this layer is dry, I grab my cat cadmium yellow and I put a coat of that yellow on and it's a closer match to the top. And I think it just belongs. It looks better. But again, whatever you choose to do is what's right. So here I'm drawing it. And then I'm grabbing some of the quinacridone magenta and I'm going to shade the dress with that and bring that into my focal image. It's in the background, the yellow, the pink, the orange, and now I want to bring that into the dress. So everything corresponds and works together. And just adding a little bit of that magenta throughout the dress to just make it not look so flat. I decided that I'm going to paint the collar white and I'm just using white gesso. I could have used white acrylic paint, which is more opaque. And I'm giving that a dry before I move to the next part. Because you don't want to put your hand in it and smear it. I 
I thought about leaving the hair as it was with the background peeking through, but then I decided that I'm going to use some brown paint and paint it brown. Yellow or blonde wasn't going to show too much against the background. So I needed a little bit more contrast. So I'm mixing a little bit, some brown with some yellow, and then I'll be coming in and adding some highlights and low lights with my angle brush later. So using the coloring pages is a great way of having a larger focal image. Basically, I mean, if I had a stamp that was like this, I could stamp it and then colorize it in much the same way. But the problem with most of my stamps aren't large enough. They're, they're smaller. So here I'm just adding some highlights and low lights to the hair to make it a little more interesting. And then I'm going to paint the flower that's in her hair. I wanted the collar a little bit more bright white. So I'm just giving it another coat now that it's dry. And then I'm adding a little bit on the fairy wings of the white, just again to make it a little brighter. In a perfect world, I should have done that before I did the gold. But there's always a workaround. And then drying between layers. I'm adding a little bit back of the gold lines that I've painted over with my fine line applicator. I could have left this footage out, but I like sharing exactly what happens. The good, the bad, the ugly. Since I had my fine line applicator, I decided I'm going to add some embellishment to her, her collar. So I'm adding circles or ovals of gold. So you can, I mean, with these printables, you can change them up however you want. Add detail. I could have put some of some more detail on her dress as well. Now I'm shading the girl, her face, her skin, her legs, the, all the parts. We're in the finishing area. Painting up the headband, and I'll paint that yellow to match her dress. Whenever I start painting something and, and colorizing it, it's, it's like, I'm afraid to start. So start with what you know you absolutely, and then you'll figure it out as you go. And once you do one step, it kind of dictates or directs you for the next step. I chose to paint the flower pink because we have that magenta in the middle. And again, you want everything on that page to go together. A little bit more shading. Mm. 
And as promised, whatever was shining through that's not completely blocked out by my painting, you can't notice it anymore. Now I'm shading around the fairy and I'm on the actual background. I'm not paint shading this on top of the fairy. I'm shading it beside the fairy on the background and I'm using black acrylic paint. This is gonna make the fairy look like it's standing out from the background and at the same time, make it look like it all belongs together. And I just worked my way around. And then I'm edging my page using the same shading technique. This just frames the page and finishes it off. If you want it darker, you can go over it after it dries and build up the layers. I grab my black Posca pen and I'm just outlining the two rectangular parts of the sentiment. And then I'm adding some of the lines on the fairy that have been lost through the overpainting process. I put on her no put her nose and her mouth, and I'm looking at the original, the printed one, to guide me. And just fine-tuning things. Adding some lines in her hair. You'll see this in the close-ups at the end of the video. I grab the white and I'm whiting out the red part of the eyes where the background was shining through. And just a little more outline work. I used more of a sketchy line than a solid line. I find that just looks better. Now I'm going to use some champagne gold stencil butter to add a little bling and a little more magic to the page. And I'm grabbing this ethereal stencil again. I've got it stenciled on black, but now I'm going to use the gold modeling paste, which is giving texture and pattern and shine. And I'm just putting it through with the palette knife. And then I'll move the stencil to another area. And I'm checking underneath to make sure that it hasn't made a mess down there. And I'm wiping it off camera, I'm wiping underneath to get any residue off before I place it down. If you're going to overlap it, you can stop and dry the stencil butter before you move on. But here it's not gonna interrupt, I can kind of hold it up and put some 
modeling paste through here or stencil butter. And I keep adding a little bit more off camera to other places once it's dry. So there is the finished page. Work around if you can't draw. Take advantage of online coloring pages and books and use a gel print as an Insta background. I decide I want to, wasn't quite done. And I'm just putting a black line around the gold embellishments on her collar. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned a few things. You can check my affiliate links below if you're looking for any of the products that I've used. There are coupon codes as well. Thank you so much for joining me. Watch to the end and see the close-ups of the page. Until next time, go get creative.